one that Caesar makes the rules, and Caesar decides the way things are going to be, but the one that God makes the rules. Now that was, that's what I mean, Jesus, Jesus prayed, thy kingdom come, let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. He was talking about this time period that was coming, that he was going to establish his kingdom on the earth, he prophesied this, he would establish his kingdom on the earth, and in his kingdom, he would be the one who created the kingdom. And I think the picture of that kingdom is that it continually grows. That's what we we're talking about last week about the growth of the seed. But this kingdom, the time of Christ, will continually grow and uh, become very powerful beyond any imagination that it comes to power. And more influential. By power, I don't just mean military power, but I mean influential. Uh, so many, 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 when you listen to atheists talk today, secular people talk, and they start talking about the way things ought to be and how bad this is and how bad that is, I just keep asking the ones that are running wrong. So tell me how you define what bad is. What good is. And you know, you, you just, what, you're, what you see in these people is they're using Christian definitions for good and bad. They have a Christian idea of how things ought to be. People shouldn't hurt each other. They shouldn't take advantage of each other. They shouldn't school shoot school children. Of course, there's been plenty of world empires that have shot plenty of school children. Okay? But somehow we got the idea that we shouldn't shoot school children. Where did we get that idea? They do it all the time around the world. But we have an idea that's not a good idea. We shouldn't mistreat women. Well, we'd be almost the first society ever that has to mistreat women. Including the ones that Greek and Rome that they love so much all the ones around the world. They love China. How do you think China treats women? How do you think, you, you, how do you think Fidel Castro treats women? They love all these people. But they have a Christian idea of how things ought to be. Now, what I'm saying is that's the influence of the kingdom of heaven, even in the secular world. People have this idea about good men and where they get it. They think they make it up themselves. No, they're getting it because they're like fish swimming in the sea. They're in the sea of Christian culture for 2,000 years now. And it's, in, it's in, uh, penetrated almost every place on earth that these ideas have. The equality of all men. Where does the equality of all men come into human thinking? Do you think the Romans and Greeks thought that? Do you think any other society in, on, in, in, in history has ever thought that all human beings are created equal? No. Where did they get that idea? Now, has, have Christians lived up to that idea? I'm not saying that. But I'm saying the idea is there in the text is what we see. And so now that becomes a standard. This is the, this is the power of that growth of that little seed we saw last year. That's one example of it. Not just how it grows in my heart, but how it grows in the world, hearts of men. And it's raised up the level of human existence. It's raised up the expectations of human beings over 2,000 years. The unparalleled heights that never were dreamed of in the ancient world that they all loved so much. Never were dreamed of. And, and uh, that's because of the influence of the mustard seed in the kingdom of heaven. So here, this kingdom of heaven, again, he's talking about the place where God rules. I believe that's the church, first of all, in our way of looking at that, the place where you and I live, the place that you and I have, as it were, pledged allegiance to that kingdom. We've been translated into that kingdom, the Bible says, when we're baptized. And so, if you're going to be a Christian, the rule that you have to live by, what, what should control or rule your heart, is the rule from heaven. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That means in my heart, in my life, as it is in heaven. And you have to understand that you have to be willing to do that whether anybody else around you does it or not. Are you that kind of person that will do good? Everybody else around you is not doing good. It's not easy to do that. But that's what's required of you. Whether you're at work or at home or on the street or wherever it is, you have to be the one who will do what's right because it's right whether anybody else around you is doing what's right. And there's been so many studies shown that people tend to do what everybody around them is doing. Everybody around them screams, they're all screams. And whatever it may be, everybody else around them is angry, they get angry. It's been shown over and over again. That, but as a Christian, you have to resist that and say what's right, what's good, what's beneficial to other people, what's edifying, what's, what is loving. That's what you have to have in your mind. It's difficult. I, I don't do that. I often say that people are not sure. So here he says the kingdom of heaven is like this. It's like a church. 
treasure hidden in a field. If you want to know something about this kingdom, well, it's like a treasure hidden in a field. Which a man found it in the field. And he did. Why would he hide it? Because he wants to make sure he can find the people. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has. listening, I'm going to embarrass
everything changed. And she said, no, that's not true. I was I was that kind of person on that side of that day. I was this kind of person. Now I'm this kind of person. And she found where we were from. Is she a an intellectual? Is she a doctor or scientist or great politician? Is she a powerful person? Does she have any money? She had none of those things. Never will have any of those things. But she has a gift. She has something that most of the world doesn't have. She knows who she is. She knows who God is. She knows the right way to go. She's got something that holds her in check so she can get there. And so she found that pearl of great price. And for her, it has brought joy. Has it fixed her problem? Yes and no. No, it hasn't made her rich and famous and made all of her problems with children and her relatives and her ex-husband or her ex-worker go ahead. They made that go away. But she has some way to tackle this thing. One of the things she has, this is special treatment for her family, she has brothers and sisters a hundredfold, even ones she doesn't know yet. Is that not working? Oh, maybe I didn't turn this on. That just that oh, mutes it. This turns it on. It's on. The light's on. It's on. Right, let me see if this is on, Joel. Did you tell them they're lucky? It's my, now. So ask me if it's better now. I just turned this individual mic on. I've told you about my little cousin. This is a year, way back, 60, 60 years ago. He was profoundly deaf from birth. Finally, they got him a little hearing aids. It looked like a Walkman but later. But when his ear and had a little thing in his chest, he could turn the volume up and down. He could sort of hear. So his dad, I heard his dad telling my dad one day, yeah, he, they work pretty good. But I noticed that when I started getting after him about something, he reaches in his shirt and turns, <laughs> turns the knob. He just turns the volume off when he doesn't want to hear, hear what he wants to hear. Anyway, um, that, that's probably a, a dumb example. But I think, I think that's what it really means for people who, who uh, find the truth of the gospel. Now, here's the, here's the problem for some of us. I grew up with this. I grew up in the time I was in, before I even knew my mother was bringing me to church and put me on the second row from the time I was an infant to hear some of the best gospel preachers of that generation that was alive then but had come to the church. I was even though it's a small little church. Some of the best ones. If I named them, if you were old enough, you'd know who they were. And all that. H had people around me that cared about me all the time, taught me how to try to do what was right, slap me upside the head when I needed it, encourage me, pat me on the back when I needed it. A and some of them weren't so good. But I grew up with that pearl. I grew up with that treasure. And then I didn't appreciate it at all, I don't think. Later, later after I got out of my, left my teenage years somewhat, I had an awakening to realize what I had was something extremely valuable. That doesn't mean I agree with everything church people do at all, as you probably can guess. I do not agree with everything that people in churches of Christ do or other churches do. I do not agree with it. What, what is it that I can agree with, though? You all know, don't you? I only agree, I only agree to agree to one thing. The word of God. That's what I agree to agree to. So they try you try to, as a preacher, they try to get you to agree to what the elders say or to what somebody else says. I don't agree to that. I don't agree to agree. I may agree, but I may not agree. I agree to agree to the Bible. Even the parts I don't understand. But as far as just the rest of it, no, I'm not going to agree to that. I'm going to agree to what the Bible says, because the rest of it I don't I have no um, confidence in. And and um, that probably includes if you brought up a bunch of sermons I preached 25 years ago and played them. I probably wouldn't even agree with those. I don't know. Maybe I would. Well, people tell me, I, well, I heard you say this one time. I go, no, you didn't hear me say that. I was drugged or something. You didn't hear me say that. I know, I, I, no, you, didn't, you think you did. But anyway, maybe I did. The treasure hidden in a field. Now, here, here's this one. Again, again, let me tell you. He says, now, 
Something, same thing. He said, I'm going to tell you the same thing. The kingdom of heaven, again, this kingdom that God, where God is ruling, is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. He doesn't say the church of Christ, as you see it on earth in poor St. Lucie, is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. That's what we people try to make it say. Say that. It might, it should, this church should reflect that what the kingdom of heaven is. That's what we're trying and striving to do, but don't confuse trying and striving and having that as an objective with the thing itself. Okay. It doesn't work very well. It's like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Let me see if I... I, I, I don't know. I've never said this before. Maybe it'll make sense to you. There are two errors people make about like uh, well, I say the church of Christ. Oh, let's, just go into, let's just go into the earthly realm for a second. Two mistakes people make about America. And you know how much I love America. But what I really love about America is what it, is, what it should be. What the documents say it should be. Okay, that's what I love about America. Because there's never been anything like it in the history of the world. And I sure don't think Marxism is anything like it okay or whatever else it may any other form of social i don't think that's like it that's what but here's what they do there are some americans who will who defend america as america has been well you're always going to be defending what is flawed and what's full of problems even in spite of all the good and there's much more good than there are problems but when you when you Cast your allegiance and say that America is this, and, and you say that's what America has done, you're going to be full of problems. Things that are indefensible. Some things are not defensible. The principles are. Is the principle that all men are treated equal to defensible proposition? I believe it is. Is the way that America has done that, is that defensible? Not a, not a lot of the time, no. Okay. So I'm not going to defend that. I'm going to defend what the principle is. Then other people do the opposite. So some people just defend what can't be defended, and they go off into error into what they think because of that. Same thing happens in religion. They belong to a church or even the churches of Christ, and they defend whatever people do. They defend what people have done in churches of Christ or what people are now doing in churches of Christ. They defend that instead of what the Bible says. And they'll defend the indefensible when they do that. They'll, be, they'll, they'll bring shame upon the name of Christ by doing that. Now, the other kind of person looks at what America has been, and they say, throw it all out. You know, Hugo Chavez has it right. Fidel Castro has it right. You know, Mark Lennon has it right. That we, we need to go that direction, or whoever it may be. They throw it all out because of the problems that are there. Once again, not looking at what it should be, they throw everything else out. So some people do the same thing with religion because they see problems in the way people do what they're trying to do, what God says. They throw religion out or they throw New Testament Christianity aside and they throw away the principle of seeking to be just a Christian. They throw that principle away because people have that they know that are trying to do that are, are not correct or are not doing well. They throw the principle away. And they've made another tragic error. So you need to be an idealist in this sense. You need to understand the ideal. What is the true principle of being just a Christian? What the New Testament says. And live for that and defend that and strive for that. All the while being able to excuse and or condemn as necessary the people along the way that you meet who are erring on either side of this proposition and keep pushing yourself and others toward that goal. Now this is the idea of a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. He was seeking the thing which was flawless in my view. He's looking for that one one pearl that was flawless. And when he found it, he sold everything he had 
to forget it. He's not going to find that in people. You're not going to find that flawlessness in, in a preacher or a mega church or, or something established by men. You won't find it there because it's not there. Or, or a person, maybe even a husband or a wife, you won't find it. But, but you can find it in what the Bible says. And you hold on to that. You, do not, you, you sell everything you have to sell. You get rid of everything else if you need to to keep that one pearl of great price. Get rid of everything else if you have to. Okay, you uh, you uh, put it where it belongs. And, and we'll come to that in a minute, more what he says to do about that. But that's what this is saying. He's saying to these people, you, they were, they were uh, familiar with religion in that day. They were familiar with the Pharisees and the Law of Moses and the Sadducees. They, a lot of those people weren't doing anything about it because they could see that these people were phonies and they were, uh, you know, charlatans or else they were just sinners. So they were just standing back and watching. And he was trying to tell them, stop standing back on the sidelines. Go find the pearl of great price. What I'm telling you is something you can hold on to. And so he wanted them to go find that pearl. This is what Peter and Andrew and James and John did on the Sea of Galilee. When he came along and began to teach them, they said, there it is. That's what we've been looking for. And what did they do? Literally, what did they do? They left all and followed him. They left it all behind and followed him. And I've met people that have done similar things in a way to that. They've even had to leave their families to be a Christian. And uh, one girl I know, been faithful ever since. I've told you about her before. Say, girl, she's an old lady now. Um, little baby, she comes one time. I think she came to the building one time years ago. But I want you to tell me about this Bible. My mother-in-law told me she, that you might be able to help me. I don't even know her mother-in-law, but the mother-in-law was a member of the church, I guess. Wasn't a faithful member. And so I began to talk. She was an atheist. But she just lost a baby. She's the one I told you about was crossing the street with a little two-year-old son. He stepped off the curb and got hit by a truck. Knocked her. I think it knocked him out of her hands and killed him right there in front of her. And had been raised as an atheist. Now, let me tell you something. That girl was lost. She had nothing to hang on to hold on to. And so when she heard the gospel, it took her just a little while. She became a Christian. Her mother told me one day, I met her mother later, I don't know what I did wrong with Debbie, she's the only one of my children that believes in God. But Debbie found something there that helped her all of the rest of her life. Like I said, she's an old lady and she's, God has not made it easy on that woman. She's had a hard life. Disappointment after disappointment. Among the people that should have known, among the people that should have been able to teach her more about the gospel, she's had disappointment. So many She's never let go of God, not to this very hour. Because she found that pearl of great price, and she sold all that she had and followed that, did that one thing. So there are people like that that you've never heard of, you never will know until you get to heaven. You'll never know these people. That's the ones that God is invested in. We think he's invested in the movie stars. He wants them to be saved as well as anybody else. Don't get me wrong. And I'm still impressed that Justin Bieber was baptized in a, ba in a bathtub in a New York City apartment one time a few years ago by some street preacher or something. Aren't you impressed by that? Bob's not. <laughs> I read the whole account. Uh, I am in a way, I am some somewhat. Is he where he needs to be? No, but I think he's better off than he was. He, he's better than he was. What about Kanye West? Same thing. I'm like, man, man just surprises me sometimes. And then he disappoints me sometimes. But God moves among people in ways. I'm not saying those two fellows are saved. I don't know. But I, I don't know that they've done what God says. But I do know that if they seek that pearl, God, he said, you, you'll find it. There's, an, there's a song, a Swedish hymn. I never heard this song. I mean to look it up. I meant to look it up, but 
I didn't have time to prepare this lesson because I just found out about quarter to five I was teaching, so I didn't have time to really look this up. Oh, that pearl of great price, have you found it? Is the Savior supreme in your love? Oh, consider it well ere you answer. Ere means is a word, poetic word for before. As you hope for a welcome above, have you given up all for this treasure? Have you counted past gain as but loss? Has your trust in yourself and your merits come to naught before Christ and his cross? So Jesus put it this way. Now, here's another way to look at it, another angle. We've got to stop me from this. Luke 14, now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, if, any, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother and his wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. This is not how you gain disciples. If you're looking at the marketing experts, the church leadership experts, they will never tell you to do this. When you get a following, turn and say, have you all even considered what it's going to cost you to follow me? You, you don't even know what you're doing. That's what he's telling them here. You don't even know what you're doing. It's going to cost you something to follow me. And we could talk about verse 26 for a few weeks. Maybe not even plumb the depths of what that might mean for someone. But whoever does not bear his cross, and they would know that means carry the instrument of death to the place of execution. It doesn't mean I bear the cross of having to sit at red lights, you know, and all this kind of stuff. That, that's not the kind of, that's not what he's talking about. Whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And the key word, I think, in verse 27, that really, the word that hits me in the face, what, do you think, what word do you think it is in verse 27? I'm making you guess. Cannot. That's the word. He doesn't say might not. He says, if you won't bear your cross, take it up and bear it for me. And come, and come follow me. After this pearl of great price, you cannot be my disciple. I won't, either I won't let you or it's not going to happen. I'm not sure which one it means. I'm not going to let you or you, you think it's happening, but it's not. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Lest after he has laid the foundation, is not able to finish, and all who see begin to mock him saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. I imagine you're going to see some houses around here pretty soon in that situation. You're going to see the walls up, maybe a slab poured, trusses on site, and then you're going to see nothing else happen. And you're going to see those trusses begin to rot, maybe get hauled off, grass grow up, you can't even see the slab anymore. What happened? They couldn't finish. They went belly up and the bank took back all the money and anyway. What king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he's able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else while the other is still a great way off, he sent a delegate. I, I was just doing the scriptural thing and, and mocking the person. I'm just teasing. <laughs> well, didn't Jesus say, before you get mad at me, didn't you see Jesus say, all who see this will begin to mock it? I really wasn't mocking people like that. I just think it's going to happen to people because they've bought stuff way, way, way over their heads and things are going to crash. Brace yourselves. Things are going to crash real bad. Unless all the ec laws of economics have been suspended for a while. And that's not good. I'm not, I'm not smiling. I'm kind of just going, slapping my forehead because, unfortunately, we're all going to go through that. Do people think I want you to not have a job? Where do you think I get all my money, live my lavish lifestyle from? From your job. That's where, so I hope you get a bigger job. Bit of bit. Why don't some of you get, some of you need to get two jobs, actually. But what king going to war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he's able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else while the other is still a great wealthy, sends a delegation, asks for conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. If you think you're going to be able to slide through this and keep, keep uh, hands in the world and, and not follow me completely, it won't work that way. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that is cast into the sea. A sane, a big net, with weights on the backside and it falls down and catches. They drag it along and gather some of every kind. 
Sometimes they go all the way to the bottom. They just get everything in the way. Pull it along by the boat and drag it up on the beach. Which, when it was full, they drew to shore. They sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but they threw the bad away. So they've got a huge pile of stuff from starfish to sharks. They take the stuff they want, put it in buckets, and go to the market with it. All the other junk, they just throw it away. So will be the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, cast them into the furnace of fire, and they will 